Hi everyone! So today I was going to explain to you guys how to dye your own wool to make yarns or um, or whatever you want to make with it. Um, anyways, I'm going to kind of describe to you the first part of the process because I already did it. And I'll move out to my kitchen here in a minute and show you um, the stage that it's at right now and what I'm doing. Anyways, the first thing you're going to need to get is some um, some raw wool. Sometimes you can get yarns on sale that are not dyed yet. Yarn stores. But you want to make sure that what you get is free. Um, or not free. You want to make sure that it's wool. Mostly wool. If it has like one little tiny bit of a part of like nylon or something in it, that's okay. But you want to get it pretty much 100% wool. This is some wool I just got on sale at a specialty store actually. I got this bundle for $7.95. That's a pretty good price for an undyed chunk this big. Um, as you can see it's kind of spun a little bit. This is also peach colored already. Well I bought it even though it was peach colored because it was all they had was this in black because I can re-dye this because it's so light. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to get your, your uh, wool and you're going to soak it in some hot water. You don't have to soak it very long, you can just like kind of unravel it and then squish it in the hot water and just keep doing that for a while. You can just set it in your sink with some hot water in it for, you know, a couple minutes, two or three minutes. Um, while you're doing this, you want to go get some jars from your kitchen or wherever, glass jars. Um, preferably with open lids, so they don't do the mouth lids, they're not like small on top and then bottlenecks that go down. Um, it's, I use my jelly jars. so. Uh, canning jars work perfect. Um, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need some dye of some sort. Now you can use food coloring, and you can use Kool-Aid, or you can actually get um, fabric dyes if you want. But Kool-Aid works just fine, and so does um, food dye. So I actually use food dye. And what I do is I get my cups, and I fill them about, oh, I don't know, halfway up with water, and then I put um, maybe... I don't know, like this much, my jelly jars are about so big, they're about this tall, they're about this thick, and I fill halfway with water, and then I put just a little bit of vinegar in it, about this much vinegar. And that actually helps the dye bind better, so that it won't just wash out afterwards. Um, you do wash it out. You can actually do this without the vinegar, but I highly suggest having vinegar and doing it without vinegar. Any kind of vinegar will work. Even if you have like a vinegar in a squirt bottle that you bought in the cleaning section of the store, which I don't recommend because it's just vinegar high price. Um, but if you have that, that'll work too. Um, on a separate note there is what you should honestly clean with, I think, is just get a huge thing of baking soda. Works perfect for scrubbing the bathtubs. And get like a huge thing of white vinegar for $3 and dilute it in a spray bottle and you got all you need for years probably to clean anything you need to clean. You can make shampoo out of it too, and you can make toothpaste out of it, and you can, you know, it's, it's just endless. But anyways, um, so the next thing you want to do is you want to get a big pot. And, I mean, I use a huge pot because there's a lot of different colors, but um, you can use a smaller pot too. However many colors you want, put one color in each jar. Um, however dark you want it, you know, depends on how many drops you want to put in. Stir it up. And then put the big pot, put about... Oh, I'd say about a quarter full of water, you know, just high enough that the jars will sit in it and it won't completely steam out of there. All the water won't. You don't have to boil it for very long, um, but you don't want the jars to be floating either. So just put a little bit of water in there, no vinegar, and then put the big pot on the stove burner. And then you want to put your jars around in a circle, kind of. And then what you do is whatever color you want to dye your um, wool, you take your wool, you squeeze it out in the sink so it's not soaking wet, and then you just put put it in whatever color you want and just stick it in there. And I have a wooden spoon that I kind of push it down in the jars with. Now, if you're doing a couple, like a multicolor, you're going to have to have multi-jars. And then what you do is you kind of um, you, like stuff a bunch in there, and then since it's like, you know, like this, as you're going, 
you'll put like a whole bunch of this in there and then you'll have like a little tail and you loop it and put it into the next color. And you just stuff a bunch in there and then you um, take it out of the jar and put it in there and stuff it in there. Or if you have one color, you can just stick it in there. Another option is if you don't have, um, if you have just two colors you want to do, there's a way to do it in the stove that's really easy too, but I'm just going to go over this method right now. Anyways, and then what you want to do is you want to get some sort of a brush, unless you want like the outside to be peach in this case, or white if you get raw wool, wool because there'll be that little lip where the color, the, the uh, um, wool is outside. And I actually can try and bring you over to show you, because that's the process I'm in right now. But, um, so there's actually like a little tiny bit of a lip that will be out, that'll be the color of the wool. So what you want to do is you want to take a brush and kind of dip it in that color you want. Put the vinegar on the brush too, and then paint that part of it. So let's see. So here's my pot. You can see it. The big pot. And I have a lid. I cover it with a lid, but I haven't gotten that up for it yet. Let me show you how I put it in here first. In my computer, it's really hard to see this. Okay, if you can see, I have it like I was describing it, different colors in each jar, and then I have the little bit on. Let's see, hopefully, I don't just dump my computer in here. These bits right here, that's where it's you know piling in. And because I want it to be a whole bunch of multicolors and sooner than big plops, I just put a bunch in. Flip it, put a bunch in, flip it, put a bunch in, flip it, put a bunch in, and I keep going in a circle. And I just keep doing that. And then I take a, I actually use my basting brush, and I dip it in here, and then I paint this way, and I paint this way so that I have a mixed color in the middle as it's going. Um, then what you do is you turn the heat on, and actually as you're doing that, you can turn the heat on. And you get it to boil. And once it's boiling, which mine's already doing, you cover it, and you let it boil for, you know, five minutes. And then you turn the heat off and you let it cool. And actually that's what I'm doing right now. I'm letting it cool. Now that the cooling process will take quite a while, actually, so you gotta wait probably an hour or so. But after it's cooled off, um, you can actually just drain the jars and you'll see that the water inside the jar no longer has any color in it because the color is all in your wool which is awesome and that's what you want um so when it's cooled down you take your your wool out of the jars and then you want to rinse it off really well in cold water um after you rinse it off really well in cold water you want to take your strands and you want to get something that you can dry it on um this wool takes forever to dry do not ever put it in the dryer don't blow dry it, that will take your entire day up. What I would recommend is if you have some sort of a pole. Let's see if I have mine out here. I have just like one of those, I don't even know what they're called, but I'm not a woods person, but it's like about this thick around, but a skinnier one will work too, and it's like a little longer than a yard. So when I get it, and it, since it's in a whole bunch of strands, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it. Let me show you something. Okay. This is the yarn I'm actually buying right now. I got it on sale for a dollar. It's not dyed. So let's just say this is my newly dyed wool. I'm going to take it over my, this is my arm, but we're going to pretend that it's the piece. I'm going to drape it like this. You see that? And I'm going to keep doing big loops and drape it because it's soaking wet. Try not to have them touch each other too much. I'm going to do that down the whole entire thing. Just keep looping it and draping it. Then I'm going to put my rod outside preferably to dry because it will dry overnight if it's outside or not overnight, but you know, within like 10, 12 hours. If you do it inside, which I've had to do in the past, like in the wintertime when I was in an apartment, um, I recommend figuring out something over your shower because it will be soaking wet and will be dripping and will get anywhere that you set it. So you got to be careful of your floors. Um, you might be able to figure out some sort of way to hang it over the sink if you're not doing very natural. Or the problem with doing it over the shower bar, I learned, is that it's going to want to drip like on the side of the bathtub and down. So if you do your shower bar, I would recommend 
loosening it and then pushing it inwards so that it actually can drain into the shower. And then you can make it over the shower, which is a good option too.